Hi, welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. This is Marcia, and in today's video, we are going to make a journal, and we're going to use a different type of slow stitch method, a slow stitch technique. So we're going to combine um, using fusible web, so a heat bond iron on adhesive. So this is the supplies you're going to need. So we're going to make a journal, slow stitch kit style, slow stitching style. You're going to need uh, foundation fabric, uh, a neutral cotton fabric. It can be white, it can be beige, whatever color you have. You're going to need um, four by five by 12 inch um, pieces of card stock. It can be any color. So take out those patterns that you don't like, that you don't love. And it could be double sided or just plain on the inside. Again, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to want some writing paper. Uh, I like to use the kids art paper that I buy at Walmart and Michaels in the kids section. And just pick out uh, like eight to 10 sheets. And so then that is going to be the inside of our journal. This is going to be a really, really, really simple journal. And then we will um, add for our center of the journal is going to be a decorative page. So this is going to be a fun project. And um, I've never made this one before, so I hope it's something new for you as well. And we're also going to need our list of journal prompts. And if you are a subscriber of mine to my Sunshine Makers Club, then you re re receive these. I send these out uh, generally every month, so it may not be this month. Uh, it could be a previous month if you have those printed out. And I like to laminate one side, and this time I used the um, gloss laminate instead of the mat. And I'll show you how to laminate just one side. So the other side is a decorative sheet. This was from one of uh, Tracy Fox's collection. I think, I don't remember if I purchased this. I think I purchased this one. Or in her newsletter, but at any rate. So when you're laminating just one side, you will need your design for the front, your design for the back, and then two sheets of printer, regular printer copy paper for the inside. And what you're seeing me do is I'm looking on the other side, making sure I'm not cutting my design. So this, you want to cut on the side that is the closest to the edge, and this was the print side here. Okay, and then now the top needs to be cut off. So you're just trimming away so that you can open up the laminate. So now we have the design for the top with its normal paper backing, the two sheets of printer paper that I put in the middle, and then my journal prompts are the back page. So it's just plain paper here, but the gloss is here, the same on here. So that makes it very easy to sew, and it also makes it easy to glue. So now when we make our journal and we're all done, then I'm going to decorate it with one of my journal prompts. And I might use the mindfulness, joyful heart, gratitude, happy place, sunshine bliss, sister love. So these are the prompts for September. And in order to receive your September prompts, you needed to reply back to the email 
that I sent this month. So open your newsletter from me this month for September if you're a subscriber. Read it and then you will be able to reply, respond back, and then I will send you your list of journal prompts for the month. That's just to um, let me know that you appreciate, you've read it, and you would like to receive your journal prompts. So in order to receive them, then that's all you need to do is just open it up and respond, and then you'll, I will reply back with your attachment, and you can copy, save these to your computer, and then you can print them out. So I think they're really cute this month. I like the design, and you can cut out around them very easily. If you don't want the little tab piece, then just cut it flush with this edge, and you'll still get the little bit of that color tone on it, which is really cute. So either way, however you want to do it. So this is going to be it. So those are the supplies, and if you have a corner rounder, so I am going to round the corners of the little journal cover. And then you're also going to need a slow stitch kit or if you have um, scraps of fabric, if you haven't purchased a slow stitch kit from my shop, then you uh, might have some scraps of fabric. So this is a great way to use up those fabric scraps. So if you quilt or sew and you have lots of fabric scraps around, then get those out. And then the only other thing is a pair of scissors, your ironing board, batting, if you want to do use any batting, and then your collection of fabric scraps. So th these are all different sizes in here. This is a bigger piece I need to take out. And so I'm going to be going through here and I'm going to show you what we're going to do and how we're going to design the outside and the inside of our journal. So we're going to decorate the cover and we're also going to decorate the inside. And this is just one little basket of fabric scraps, so I have lots more. Now the first thing I want to do is take my cover and we're going to use paper pieces, collage, like we would do if we were going to make a master board or a snippet roll even, paper or fabric. We're going to use that same method and we're going to cover and collage the whole inside of the journal cover. Then we're going to turn it over and we are going to make a same kind of a collage but we're going to do it in fabric. So what we want to do is we take our foundation piece and we're going to cut it the same size as the journal cover. All right, so let me get this over here. All right, so I want it to be right up even with the other, with the edges. Okay, and then just mark it. If you have a fabric pen, pencil, or just like me, <laughs> improvise and just use whatever it is you have on hand. And just mark it so that you know you're going to cut it in a straight line, more or less. Okay, now we want to get our fabric scissors. side of that pencil line. 
and it's going to be covered up with the fabric so you don't have to be precise just close to that pencil line this is going to be so fun and it's going to be a really pretty design this is something unique not like anything you've done before this one around these edges a little bit and I can round them again when I get it on the actual cover So I'm going to be sending out another email with something that I think is going to really benefit everyone. And it is going to help your overall mental health and creativity. So I'm really excited about it and hope you will be too. Okay. Okay, so I like this now. All right, so now what we need to do is we're going to take, set that aside, and now we're going to go through our fabric scraps, and we're going to cut strips of fabric, first of all, and I want to cut them, um, you, you have to decide, either cut them the length this way of your fabric, or turn it and cut them this way. So I'm going to do mine vertically because it will, um, I think, just will look cuter. If I would do it horizontally, then I would do three strips, just pick out three different patterns of fabric that coordinate together. But I want to do them uh, vertically. So 12 inches, and I'm going to do two-inch strips. So that would be a total of six patterns that I'm going to need. And you want to use a um, thinner cotton. So like this type of a cotton versus this kind. So do you see how thick this is? It's like a brocade type of a fabric. and uh, But this is your normal quilting cotton fabric. So something thin. And we want them, like I said, two inches wide. So let me get my ruler. Okay, so this is a little bit more than two inches. So I'm gonna have to trim that down, but that's okay. Because I want them to turn out all the same. So two inches. First, I want to mark here to the edge of the fabric. Okay. And then the two inch point. Okay, so two inches here, two inches here, two inches here, two inches here. Come down here, two inches here, and two inches here. Okay. So there is measuring and cutting in this. Now, if you already happen to have some two inch strips that you've already cut and in your stash, well, that's even better. Now, this is going to be my guide for cutting the other strips. So I'm going to just take this, and now I'm going to use it, and I just need to pick out five more fabrics, and then we'll cut those into the two inch strips. Uh, 
I just really am happy to do this little project today because with my nervous system regulation program that I'm doing, and it, I need a journal. And the information that I'm going to be sending you for something else that I'm doing that I came across in a Mary Jane Farms magazine back in 2005, I believe is when I had, she had the article. And then she has a doctor that submits articles every month. And I think it was last issue, I say every month, but it's bi-monthly. The last issue I shared with you was on um, tips about Lyme disease, if you remember that, ticks. Ticks, more not, not necessarily Lyme disease, but more in the line of tick prevention. So this month she has something else that is very timely. Okay. So first I'm going to just pick out different patterns and then when I finally settle on what I like, then I will So I'm liking this. Okay, so light, colorful, light, colorful. Okay, I'm liking that. And then I will either, okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, two more. So that would mean a colorful one here and a light one here. All right, so let's look through the stash. This one's too short. Yep. So some of your scraps may be too short, but that's okay. Just keep looking. That, that one's too short. Okay. Okay, I like this. Another blue with the pink. So this is blue with pink. This is just pink with green and white. This is white with pink and like a mauve. And then this is cream with pink and a little bit of gray. So again, whatever colors you want to use, this is your journal, then just enjoy. I do like this. I may take that one away and this one instead. Okay, I kind of liking that. Or, yeah, this kind of is, well, not, not exactly the same, but just very bold. Okay, let me see. Set that one aside. Decisions, decisions. Let me see. Thinking I will put this one down here and then put this one over here. I'm liking that next to that. And then this is kind of like a focal. I may switch out the blue altogether if I can, if I get more pinks. Where did I put that pink that I had a minute ago? That might be better. Okay, now we just need a light color. Try to flip it around. 
I might even leave the words. I kind of like that. Barefoot roses. I kind of like that. All right, now, okay. I will either go with, ooh, just right. This red, maybe? No. Too dark. Pretty, but too dark. Or I could take this out. Let me try that. Let's see, do we like that? No. <laughs> That's not, not what I want. And we need a light, another light colored something. Okay, what do we think about this? Let me straighten this up. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a rose pattern on this white fabric. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. But I'm not quite wanting to have two of the same. I could put this one back. Do it like that. Okay, good enough. Doesn't have to be. I don't want to overthink it here. All right, now do I want to go this route? Save the words for another project. I might do that. Let me do that. these two. Get that out of the way.
Okay, and the last piece. So what I like about this idea is the fact that we will be using up fabric scraps and paper scraps. Now, the, then the idea, after we have this, is put the iron-on fusible. Wait a minute. Something. Something's not in the right order. Okay, so there you, there you get the basic idea. And then we can come, after we iron this on, now we'll come back and we can do some slow stitching on top of this. And then this whole piece is going to go on top of the cardstock. And then that will be our cover. Won't that be beautiful? And then we'll flip it around, and then we'll decorate the inside with our torn strips of paper. So, I mean, this is a really easy and fun project to do. Okay, so the next step is we want to cut a piece of our fusible web. And let's see, I guess I'll use the paper scissors. You may do it a different way, but this is the way I do it. Okay, so now this is the side we're going to lay our fabric on away. Okay, so now we're going to just take those pieces and uh, lay them right on top of here. Really simple and easy. Let's see which side is the right side. Does it matter? Alright, I kind of like this side. Okay, now this piece is wrinkled, so I am going to iron the wrinkle out. And then when I iron it in place, it will be nice and straight. And you want your fabric to kind of go over the edge, make sure it doesn't, there's nothing peeking out. So on this particular piece, it's really going to be close, so I definitely want to get the wrinkle out. So let me do that first, and then I will take it over and then iron that. Okay, so now I have the fabric ironed on, fused on to the bad beginning of that foundation piece. And isn't that turn out really pretty? I really like that. And then now this is the journal cover. This is the inside. So this is the side that we're going to put this fabric cover on once I have attached the lace so it's going to look really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and just round these corners, trim off the extra. <clears throat> just 
try and stay right up close to the edge of that. That's better. A little bit extra over here. And round this corner. Just want to clean it up. All right, now again, making sure we have the paper, the wording going in the right direction. So then this would be on here, and then this will be here. So this will be the inside cover, and then this is the outside cover. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. Okay, so and then now with it folded, then I can see that it's a little bit big, so that's okay not a problem and when I'm through and I get it actually glued then I will after I close it then I'll trim it so now I'm seeing with it closed this seam right here is going to be right on the spine <clears throat> so what I'm going to do what I'll have to do is um, when I go to attach the signature and I'm going to just punch a hole here and punch a hole here and run some baker's twine to hold that, that signature in place. Um, I want to make sure that I can punch through the layers. So I will have the fabric and the cardstock, which is not a problem to punch through. And But I want to be strategic in the lace that I put on the spine and so that I'll be able to punch through that. So that's the one thing I need to uh, keep in mind. So then this can be set over to the side. Now, if you got to see my um, video on the, the vintage lace that was gifted to me, then I wanted to use some of that in this project. So here they are. Such a pretty, 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 pretty and I'm thinking I might use some of this. <clears throat> like right up here, coming in. I thought that would be really pretty. So that one's going to be saved for that. And then now, let me see what I have that would make be easy to go down the spine that I could punch a hole in. So I know that I want to have it Okay, so then I could cut it right here on that front of that little rosette. And then it looks like, yes, I could easily punch a hole here through that open spot and then here through this open spot. So that would be absolutely perfect and easy to do. Trim that. <clears throat> And then when it's folded, now this is what I want to test. Okay, so I'm going to sew this. And then, so I want to make sure I'll probably come and do a zigzag stitch, but then I'm going to have to be careful too when I punch the hole of not punching through my stitching. All right, what else do we have? Okay, this is so pretty. Goodness, is that all the same thing? Yeah, no, I can't quite tell. Yeah, I guess it is. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, where's the end of this? All right, so now this, I think I decided this is going to be the front, and then this is going to be the back. So I want this to go here, be on this seam. So when I'm doing my slow stitching and I um, have the different you know sizes of 
um, fabric squares, I like to cover the seams with the lace. I think that just gives it a finishing look and it's so pretty. Don't you think? See how that looks really nice? This is a like a brocade and the brocade, the ends tend to unravel. So I'm going to have to think about if I want to use this one here or not. And then I have another white one. Okay, so let's see. Maybe I'll put the white here. I'm just looking to see which is the front, which is the back. Does it really? Let's see. I can't quite tell. Okay, maybe this side. That would be pretty. That looks really nice there. But I really wanted to put more of the cream. So I put a cream here and a cream here. So that'd be white, cream, white. I would want cream here. Okay, so let's scoot this one over. Okay, so white, cream, white, cream, white. Okay, that works. That works. And hold on to it down there. My little shaky hands. Okay, and then this is going to go across the top. Let me show that again. Love this crocheted. Beautiful. Now I do have smaller ones. I may get out one of the smaller ones. I don't know. I think this is a little too big. It just seems like it's overpowering. To it. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so let's try this. That's too tiny. Okay, so that's too small. One's, one's too big, the other one's too small. So we need to go to the just right stage. <laughs> okay, so let's just put this in place. Because there's a right side and a wrong side to the lace, so always double check on that. You can, you'll be able to, when you look at it, you should be able to see by the Stitching. Okay, that's really pretty. I like that. Okay. Then this. They really look almost the same on both sides, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's really pretty. I like this. It's looking really good. And then I'll do some kind of a nice decorative border. I might do something not this small, but something similar all the way around. So we're going to do the cream here and then I'm going to border it in a cream as well. So let me get out more lace and see what it, I'm going to pick out. And then in the meantime I do want to put a pocket front and back on the cover. So I'm going to do that. I'll pick out some something decorative for here and just I'm thinking just glue it I'm not thinking about, I may or may not st stitch it, it just depends. Whatever I do, I'll, you'll see what I decide in the end. But it's coming together and I think it looks really nice, don't you? Okay, so let me get the lace and um, pick out some more sizes and then I'll audition those and then I'll figure out what I want to use for the pockets here. Okay, oh, this is oh, just so much fun. I am so unlocking my creativity today. It's just like super exciting. I am so happy about this whole process. And I think something else that is really helping me to feel so happy and positive again is that I am seeing so much progress with my um, huh, nervous system regulation journey that I'm on for healing my whole body and oh, it's just 
beautiful and fabulous. So every day I get outside in the morning with my husband and we ground ourselves under our beautiful rain tree. And that has been so exciting and liberating to do. And today I actually put my toes in the dirt. Now I have been to the beach and I do put my feet in the sand. But to me being in the ocean and that salt water and the sand just looks clean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that I don't have any hesitation whatsoever to take off my shoes and my sandals and put my toes in the sand at the beach. So I have done that. I don't even know. I can't remember how many times over the last 18 years, but pretty much I have been a housebound person and strapped to going to the doctor every month for treatment for my Lyme disease. So this is such a huge step forward in the positive right direction for me. And I'm just so ecstatic about it. And it's just making me feel so confident and so much more positive about myself and my, my healing journey. And it's just my overall mood and my outlook and I'm sleeping so much better. And oh, it's just like beautiful to see this transformation and this, this progress. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to make a cluster to go on the front of this journal. This is such a pretty journal. And this is going to be um, one of my help documentation journals that I'm using. And I made a couple of them up the other day and I just took a piece of cardstock and I really didn't uh, do anything fancy to it at all and put my art paper on the inside and that was it. <laughs> but this one, I'm just feeling so happy today. And my energy level is so much higher. So between the grounding that I'm doing, I've done it for three days now in a row, for 13 minutes the first two days and 12 minutes more or less today. Might have gone over a little bit, but anyway. Um, basically 12, 13 minutes for the last three days. And just that little bit, I'm already seeing a huge benefit. Inflammation is reducing, and that happens the first day that you start grounding. And if you want more information on the grounding, I am gonna be sending out um, a newsletter. My Sunshine Makers Club members, you'll be receiving more information on this because this is definitely something that everyone needs to know about. It's safe. Um, there's a few, what do they call those things? Caveats um, to it. And I will mention that in the newsletter as well. There's only one group of people that I know of on one type of prescription medication that needs to be aware of something when you do grounding. But I think for the most part, people don't even know that and they probably are doing grounding and maybe taking that type of medications and they're not having any problems. So, but you need to know about it anyway. Just do your research, Google um, grounding and then you'll be able to find out all kinds of questions. There's lots of frequently asked questions. So now what I'm doing is in the cluster I'm going to make, I like to do a fabric base and then lace on top of that. And the fabric base just gives it more stability when you're sewing through your lace. And then I put a yo-yo, fabric yo-yo on top of that and then the button. So that little cluster is going to go here, approximately like right here on this front cover. Oh, it's going to be just beautiful, stunning. This thing is turning out 
absolutely fantastic. Now the beautiful thing about this journal and this style journal is that yes, we're putting one signature in it, but the way we're doing the cover and the way I'm sewing it in the signature is it is not being sewn in, it is only being secured with the baker's twine. So once you have filled up that signature, you can actually take that signature out, just untie the twine, take off that signature, make a new signature, put it in, and you continue to use your journal cover. So if that's something that sounds you know, like a good idea to you, which sounds like a good idea to me, and then I have an altered book that I made and it has, it's um, leather bound, I don't remember, if it, oh, Time Life, I think it was, something to do with the Western culture and the Wild West, that kind of thing. And so it's a really nice book and it has over 12 pockets in it and so I will take these signatures and put them in that book and in the different pockets. And that's where I will store um, this information. And then for future reference, I'll be able to go to that book, pull out the different pockets, and then I'll be able to see my progress with my healing journey that I'm doing right now. Okay, so this ribbon, I'm going to... Um, I usually forget this step, so I remembered it today. So I'm putting a ribbon that will tie to keep the pages closed, to keep the journal closed. I just like that um, look, and I don't do it very often. You could just put a whole ribbon around it, but I don't don't really want to do that. So I'm, I'm going to be gluing this. So here's the cover. Here's the... Um, actually, this one goes here. Here's the ribbon, here's the back of the cardstock, then that will get glued down. So then when I glue this all the way around, so I'll glue the ribbon down first and then I would glue this fabric cover. But that is the last uh, step. So the first thing I wanna do before I'm gonna glue anything down is, and I'm thinking I'm going, I wanna sew this cluster through my fabric cover and then I'll glue it to the cardstock. So what we're gonna do is make a yo-yo and I love to use this little clover uh, template, this little clover yo-yo maker. Did I do it the right way? I think I went through the wrong way. Wait a minute. Well, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> I can't remember if I'm supposed to go in from the back first or the front first or if it even matters. We'll find out in a minute. And I make these things frequently and you'd think I could remember that right now. I think I was supposed to come in from back here. Did I do that? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I did do it right. So when you're doing it, you want to come in from the back first, and you'll see that there's two little, it's like a U shape, and you want to come in through the first one, and then you just follow the, that little pattern all the way around, and then you will make an adorable, perfectly shaped yo-yo. And I know some of you know how to do that without the template, but I have never learned or tried to do it that way. So I just like using my little template. And you can buy the set. You can buy this little small one individually. There's a one smaller than this, a mini. So when this one is completed, it's a one inch yo-yo. And then the mini is a half inch yo-yo very teeny tiny I have a few of those in my Etsy shop and then there's a medium yo-yo and then the large jumbo I don't know what you would use those on but I've thought about making all of the sizes and then just layering them to see what what that turns out to look like well, I'm gonna make, keep an eye on the thread as you're going around you know how sometimes it has a tendency to get a little knot and that's what it was just about trying to do and so always keep an eye on your stitching 
especially that embroidery thread. Oh, that stuff is famous for knotting up on you. Almost done. Okay. And when you're doing this and making it, uh, especially with a cluster, oh, you can just use so many different fabric patterns that would just turn out so beautiful. But I went a little bit muted here, so we'll see if this is what I wind up sticking with. I had a black polka dot, but I thought, eh, I'm going to save that one for my red, black, snippet roll cluster that I'm doing. Okay, now we want to tie a couple of knots. So you want to pull the one tail that had the knot in it to begin with long enough so that you can tie it a couple of times. that brings that center tight. And then I'm going to add a vintage button into the center of it. I like to do it three times. So I go one direction, and I go the other direction, and I back and forth, and then tie a, cut off those tails. using that again in a minute to sew this on, but I just want to put it on here and see what I like think about that. Now that kind of just like blends in really, it's kind of like, what it, don't you think it just kind of fades into the whole look of it? It's nothing that just like pops off the page, right? Are you seeing that as well? So it's like this, it's just picking up this very soft beige. There's like a soft here. And then now the lace that I chose was this green and this coral. So that kind of pops. But I really wanted that yo-yo to really stand out and it's just not doing that. So I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep him for future use. Let me show you the black one I had. Oh, this looks so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? I, that I absolutely love. But I did, like I said, I'm saving him for my other snippet roll project. But this, I just thought, oh my word. <laughs> that is so beautiful. And now see, that gives it that pop and that nice contrast. And again, it's your journal. You can do whatever you want to with it. So I'm going to look through my fabric and find something else in a, a contrasting darker tone, a really bright either pink or something green, I don't know, that will pop and really stand out with this journal cover because it's just something that I want that's going to be cheerful, and I love that. Okay, and then with the cluster, I have this charm that says Miracle. And that's going to go on there. And then my button will go in the center of the yo-yo. And that's going to be that beautiful cluster. So I will get a piece of fabric. I might use this. I'm not sure. I want to show you. So this is what this snippet roll turned out with the little clusters. Isn't that beautiful? So this is what I'm going for. I just love the soft with the bold. I mean, that just turned out just absolutely gorgeous. And that's the look that I want to create on this journal cover. Okay, so this is what I found. So this beautiful, bold red, which picks up on this rose beautifully. And then this yummy, 
mint green, dark green, and red. Oh, that's going to be gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to just put it in this corner over here. I didn't have a whole lot of this fabric, so I was really saving it. And thank you so much. This, I love this. Absolutely love it. Okay, so I'm going to see if I fold that down. Okay. Use the pinking shears. Just trim that. Okay, now save that. That could be a little scrap that I can put on here as well. All right, so same thing. I will stitch this and be right back. Okay, I am moving right along. So let me show you what I have done. All right, so I finished the cluster. I have my little miracle charm attached and I decided on my journal prompt, which is going to be joyful heart. And I have not attached these yet, but I just wanted to show you the placement how it turned out. And now I have the ribbon attached, but I still have to glue the cover to that inside cardstock. But I wanted to show you what I did on the inside of this now. And I will, I trimmed down the cover so that when it closes, it didn't gap over the sides. And made the two pockets out of the one-sided laminated decorative piece. This botanical print, isn't that pretty? And then I punched the little notch here to put something in there. And then I've got my nice background here. Didn't that turn out pretty? I mean, it's so simple and easy. Okay, so now the next step, and I stitched with the machine these two pockets onto there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to glue this cover onto the fabric. And I'm not going to glue down the center because that's where I need to punch the holes to actually attach the signature when I get to that. And I am putting on two layers of the glue. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just do one side at a time. So making sure my print was facing me and I already know how far I need to be from that zigzag. Bring it over a little bit. Okay. I want to line it up as best I can. All right. So we have half an inch there half an inch there. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to take and burnish just with my fingers. Top and bottom. And the reason why I like to do it one side at a time is that it just is much easier to do and then if I needed to make any adjustments it's a whole lot simpler to do that. Okay now all I need to do is flip this over and apply more glue. right on the stitch line over this side the nozzles a little bit clogged so it's not coming out 
which is probably a good thing because I usually overdo it on the glue. I don't know what's clogged it, but let me unclog it with my little pokey tool. Actually a paper piercer or something. I forget what the name of these this is actually. Okay, let me okay. I always want to clean these tips off right away. Okay, see if that opened it up. It's a little better. I think there's a glob of glue in there. This is what's actually the problem. But that does seem to have opened it up a little bit better. Okay. nice little handle of the ribbon. <laughs> okay, and lay that down. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So when you're gluing paper to fabric, you really want to use a lot of glue because the fabric absorbs a lot of that glue. about this journal because what I'm using it for. The glue went through onto the mat so I know I've got plenty of glue on that side. But this tacky glue is, Aileen's tacky glue is very uh, permanent so it's not going to come apart. All right, I'm not going to fold it, but I will open it back up now and just double checking, making sure I've got my pockets at the bottom as I know I do. Turn my fan back on. going to glue the cluster to this corner and then I will glue my word sentiment. I think I like it like that. I might bring it up here a little bit. So again, generous amount. I'm just going to glue onto this fabric here. I'm not going to go onto the lace. Generous amount. Turn it back over. Lay it down. Position it. Turned out so pretty. And I will allow this to dry. And now I know this is the spine where I put the. So I just I might want to maybe I'll tuck it under there a little bit. I just wanted it to be like tucking out from the lace a little bit. And I'm trying to see where I exactly want it. Do I want that lace to be like over the top of it? I think I like it like that. 
And remember, this is just the paper backing. I only laminated the front. corner of the lace, cute as can be, and then it's tucked under over here, pressing that down into place, lift that up a little bit, that looks really nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I hope you will use your journal prompts and make a beautiful journal like this. And then next, after this all has dried, so I'm going to let the cover dry, let the little cluster dry, the ribbons, I glued these actually on. I stitched everything else to the cover. And absolutely going to be gorgeous so now these this I will have to trim off these a little bit so I will trim these down so I need it to be probably I'm gonna trim it like right there but that's like what half an inch three quarters of an inch off okay so we'll cut three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna cut these one by one because I don't want a, a jagged edge, and I know I can cut about three pieces at a time. Make a little mark with my pencil. And I can trim that. will go in there. So now what I'm going to do get my chair back. Now I will slide that up. Fold these individually. This is what I like to do. Okay, so I fold them, crease them one by one, and then I find that it just goes better when it's finally put together and folded if you fold the each sheet individually creasing it good I just use back of my fingernail and this works perfectly now when I make my mini journals I make it the size so that all I have to do is use my stapler but if we're going to sew it on the machine, if it's going to be permanently in the journal, then I would use a sewing machine. But since I'm going to do a different method with this, because I absolutely love this cover and I don't want it to just be a one and done, I want to be able to reuse it over and over and over. Now at this point, 
this is where I can come in and put decorative pieces in between here. I could put decorative piece front and back and leave the writing pages in the middle and then put one here. So I'll put one in the middle here, one in the front, and then that will be the decorative element. So this is too short now because I've cut it off, but that was my original original plan was I was going to use this front and back, but it's that's okay. All right, let me see what I have. Maybe another decorative map page. Okay. A little short, but that's okay. I do have, I have the uh, original book, so I could get another piece out of the book. I might do that. Alright, so let me find what I want to use for the decorative front and back, and then that will give this time to dry, and then I will um, punch the holes, and then I'll do it all the way through the cover. Okay, now the real fun part begins. All right, I had this 19th century French flower wrapping paper, so I went through and picked out what I wanted to use, and now I'm going to attach this into the cover. So this is going to be a little bit on the tricky side. So what I have to do, okay, first line it up, which I like that, and then now take my clamps, clamp that one to that end, bend it, make sure it's right where I want it to be. Looks good. And then clamp this end, double check on this end, okay, looking good. Now, it's a little high, unclamp it, I need to move it down just a little bit. it, bending it, making sure it's exactly where I want it before I punch any holes. Okay, now the next thing is what baker's twine do I have? And I believe I still have my cream colored one, so let me see if I can find it. the hole. All right, now I have two sizes. I do not want this large size. I want this smaller size. Okay, so we're going to bend it. Here's the spine right there. You can see I'm lining it up. You get the light. Make sure I'm in the light. I'm seeing the crease there. I love this tool. I mean, look at how many layers this went through. It went through the fabric, the lace, the cardstock, and then all these papers. I mean, this thing is fabulous. It's the We Are Memories Keeper Crocodile. Love it, love it, love it. And that spring action, oh, it's like the scissors. Oh my goodness, it's so easy to do. Make sure you're lining it up. I can see all the way through, so I know that it's there. Okay, now, if I really wanted to be adventurous, I would get my pokey tool and go here, but I don't. <laughs> so 
So we're just going to get the baker's twine and wrap it through here. And trust me, it's strong enough. You don't need to worry about it. It works beautifully. I do this all the time. All right, so let me find that beautiful cream colored baker's twine. Okay, so I have this burlap. I think it's something like that kind of a twine instead. I think I like that look much better. And now open it up and there we go. It's attached right here in the center, nice and secure. I pulled it tight and we have the pocket in the front. We have the pocket in the back and I can tuck whatever little mementos I want in there. I've got my little miracle charm. Now I can tie the ribbon. Beautiful. Make a bow. and then close it. Okay, that looks nice. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? So that keeps it closed. I love it. Front and back. I absolutely am going to love writing in my joyful heart full of miracles in this journal with my beautiful health journey health and wellness journey. So let me see how many pages did I wind up with. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then another, so that's 16, and then another 16 here in the back. So that is absolutely plenty for me to use and to have to write on. And what I'm going to put here, because this is very thin paper, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is reinforce it and I'm going to put a fold out um, piece. So this, real, this right here just made me think of that since this piece was already folded. So I'm going to just have a natural fold here and but I'm going to reinforce this. I'm going to put some other beautiful papers there and then I will glue it top and bottom here and have a little tuck spot and then maybe this would be a perfect place to put these little scrap pieces. Those will go in there, paper on the back. So that gives me two little journal cards there if I want or I can use these in this pocket. That goes perfect there. And then I thought I would do the same thing. I'm going to cut this down and make little journal cards and put them in that pocket. So there you have it. So wasn't that a wonderful project? I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you take your um, cardstock scraps, ones maybe that you don't really uh, like, and turn those into a beautiful journal using our slow stitch kits and make a beautiful cover with that. Isn't that beautiful? And then you can make your snippet roll and you can pick yo-yos up in my shop. I have those and, and just a variety of nice colors. They come in sets. And if you want um, some of my slow stitch kits, I actually include um, one yo-yo and the latest kit comes with four. So I um, have them in, in the slow stitch kits as well. So thank you for joining me here today. I hope that you will enjoy making this journal and stay safe, keep creating in the sunshine, and I will see you in the next video here on Markets of Sunshine.